Welcome, Hepatitis C, the silent disease. In this video, Dr. Nancy Rowe, an expert on liver disease, will answer common questions about Hepatitis C, including who may be at risk and why it is important to get tested. Hepatitis C is a silent disease, which means that you don't have a lot of symptoms until you have a lot of liver injury. So if you wait to find that you have hepatitis C, when you know that you have signs of liver disease, it's really too late. We want to get this cured at a time where we can keep your liver nice and healthy. Most people don't actually know that they're infected. You don't have a lot of symptoms. And even though we have known risk factors like injection drug use or high risk tattoos, about a third of our individuals who have hepatitis C aren't able to really come up with a risk factor. That's especially important in our group, which we used to call the birth cohort, people born between 1945 and 1965, because here a lot of everyday things like iatrogenic exposure, that means going to the hospital, going to your doctor's office, getting a vaccine. Um, these might have let a person get exposed to hepatitis C, and that was such a uh, you know, common factor that we really have to proactively look for the infection and not wait for symptoms or not identify and screen just those that think that they might have a risk for exposure. We recognize that hepatitis C is a slowly progressive disease. And that means even if you were infected 10, 20, 30 years ago, you may not have symptoms of infection. So it's not good enough to know that you might've had a blood transfusion and you feel great right now. Liver test numbers are also very normal in patients infected with hepatitis C. Not everyone, but just because your liver test numbers are normal does not mean that you don't have infection. Our screening guidelines have changed over time. Originally, they were risk-based, which meant that we were supposed to ask you about risk um, behaviors that might increase the chance of getting hepatitis C. And that didn't work very well because a lot of people don't know that they had a risk factor or don't have any risk factor when they find that they have infection. That then changed to include a group of individuals that were at higher risk of being exposed to hepatitis C through just normal everyday activities. And that's our group of people born between 1945 and 1965. But because we were still missing a lot of individuals who had hepatitis C and curing the virus prevents disease progression, the new guidelines have been very all encompassing, which means that pretty much every adult in America should have at least a one-time screening test for hepatitis C. Everyone between the age of 18 and 79 is really recommended to be tested at least once. On top of that, any woman who is pregnant is recommended to be tested at each pregnancy. Unlike hepatitis B, this is not an infection where you can get a vaccine that can prevent you from getting exposed. So we know that we are trying to capture a time when we can identify things early and pregnancy is a nice time where we can screen people and then link them to curative treatment, even if it's not during the pregnancy, but after the delivery. We also recommend screening for anyone who has a risk factor such as injection drug use, sharing needles or syringes with someone who might have hepatitis C, or who maybe um, had an unregulated tattoo or has been incarcerated. These are all risk factors for hepatitis C exposure. And we wanna make sure we identify the virus early at a time where we can cure you before there's any type of, of liver damage or if you do have liver damage that we can cure the virus at a time where the liver can recover or at least prevent ongoing injury. Now, even if you don't have any of these risk factors, we still recommend a one-time screen for pretty much everyone, but that's gonna be especially true if you have abnormal liver chemistries. So if your liver test numbers are abnormal on your routine lab work, you wanna make sure you talk to your provider about making sure you've been screened for hepatitis C because this, can be present even if your liver chemistries are normal, but if they're abnormal, you wanna make sure that hepatitis C is not the explanation. We also know that there are some other risk factors. 
Um, if you had a clotting factor that was made before 1987, if you had a blood transfusion or blood components before 1992, if you had an organ transplant before 1992, these are all times when you want to talk to your um, provider about making sure you were screened for hepatitis C because these types of blood products or organ transplant could have actually been exposed to hepatitis C and you could get the infection from that life-saving activity that you had that you got. We also know that people who have received blood from someone who's exposed might have gotten a letter saying you um, might have gotten a transfusion from one, someone who is hepatitis C infected. Don't ignore those. Make sure you take those letters to your family doctor so they can see if you might have infection. The same is also true if you go and you donate blood and you get a letter back that says you might have been ex exposed or you might have hepatitis C. Take that letter to your doctor so that they can test to make sure that disease is not infect um, active because again, it is a very easy to cure virus. We wanna make sure that we identify um, someone who could benefit from being cured. As we know, every woman is being tested now during pregnancy. If you're hepatitis C positive as a mother, your child really needs to be screened um, and you wanna to talk to your pediatrician about how and when to screen that, that child. It's also important to recognize that children do grow up. So if you're an adult and you find that you have hepatitis C, you wanna make sure you communicate that to your family because you wanna make sure that, that your children were also screened. Now the risk of acquiring hepatitis C or getting hep C from your mother at the time when she's pregnant or at the time you're born is really, really low. So the vast majority of these tests are going to be negative, but we just don't want to miss an opportunity to identify someone who can be cured of their disease at a time when they're still really healthy. Screening is simple. A very easy, simple blood test can determine if you've been exposed to the virus, and that normally reflexes or automatically just goes over to see if the infection is still active. And it's important to know that this is a curable virus, but if it's left untreated, the virus can cause liver disease, liver cancer, and cirrhosis. And because of that, hepatitis C does remain a common reason for liver transplant in the United States. We know that early detection can prevent progression. So if you have advanced disease, do not despair. If we cure the infection, the risk of cancer and symptoms of liver disease goes down significantly. If you have early disease, curing the infection can prevent progression to cirrhosis, progression to liver cancer risk, and decrease the chance of dying from a liver-related death. It's also... Important to know that hepatitis can cause more than just liver complications. It's a pro-inflammatory virus. It's immune modulatory. Those are the fussy words for saying it causes inflammation in the body and chronic inflammation can cause problems. We know that people who are infected with hepatitis C as a group are more likely to develop diabetes, are more likely to develop certain types of cancer, are more likely to develop certain types of skin problems, kidney problems. And if we cure hepatitis, it can decrease the chance of having these complications. It's also important to know that the treatment is very safe and readily available. Our medications are currently pills. In the past, we used injection therapy, but injections are no longer a part of our hepatitis C treatment. It is all pills. And cure rates are, are um, expected in over 90% of our patients. So that if you are going to take the medication, you don't miss any doses, we really do expect for you to be cured. And we don't expect for the treatment to have very many side effects. Now, nothing is ever completely side effect free, but very, very few individuals stop treatment because the medications make them feel poorly. So you really should be able to expect to go through your treatment, continue to work, continue to engage with your family, continue to do all the things that you need to do while you're on treatment. You just wanna make sure you don't miss the doses. Thank you for watching. If you would like to learn more about hepatitis C, visit the Resource Center on the American Liver Foundation's website for additional videos and materials.